Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. If it doesn't improve, then you might go see a doctor, right? So it's important to know what to expect when you go to the doctor. So if you go to a doctor, first of all, the doctor is going to tell you to do all the stuff I just told you to do. So there you go, free lesson. So uh, no copay, no nothing. Those are the things the doctor is going to do to tell you um, to start with on day one. Now, if you don't get better, the doctor is going to tell you to do st other stuff. So the next thing they might do is fit you with a fracture walking boot. The idea there is that you know you're moving the foot, toes are moving up and down every time you take a step, and that motion of the tendons gliding back and forth through the extensor tendon sheath under the retinaculum when you walk is aggravating and irritating them. The idea is they stick you in a boot, it locks you up, you can't move, you're not moving the tendons at all, and because there's no motion, they'll start to calm down faster. Of course, the doctor can also charge you for a fracture walking boot and probably bill your insurance company hundreds of dollars for that thing, but you don't necessarily need it. So, you know, you could try it and it may help some, but that's not really a great solution for you. I mean, I've talked about this a hundred times. It's like when you use a fracture walking boot, you get weaker, you get stiffer, you lose your neuromuscular connections, and then you're at risk of all kinds of other training injuries later because you are weaker, stiffer, and uncoordinated. So you don't want to spend any more time in the boot than you have to. If you do it for only a couple of days just to treat it aggressively initially, that's okay. But I'm not a fan of putting people in fracture walking boots for several weeks just to see if it'll calm down the extensor tenosynovitis. So be aware of that. The other thing that doctors will do is they'll give you prescriptions. They may tell you to take ibuprofen. Uh, they may give you a prescription for some other kind of anti-inflammatory drug. I'm not a huge fan of those for lots of different reasons I've talked about in other episodes. But the thing that they may do that might help the most if they're going to do it is to inject it. So when we inject the tendon sheath, we inject a mixture of local anesthetic and corticosteroids. So corticosteroids basically stop inflammation. Now there's a risk and a benefit to everything, of course. Nothing for medicine is, is free. So for everything that seems like it might work, there's also some kind of risk attached to it. And that's almost universal in medicine. So the deal with the corticosteroids is that they're the best thing around to stop inflammation. They're also the best thing around to break up collagen. So if you have a lump of collagen that's scar tissue effectively and you inject it, well, that's a good thing. It breaks up the scar tissue. But when you have an, an tendon issue, the concern is always that if you had a tear or a split in the tendon and we inject steroids into the tendon sheath, it stops the inflammation. It feels better, but it actually starts to weaken the collagen and breaks up the collagen bonds where that split has started to repair itself. And then you slow down the healing process or potentially even make it worse because then the collagen's weaker and it can split or tear more. So that is one thing that your doctor may offer to, to you. So you just need to talk to them realistically about how much it really hurts, what the concerns are, and what you're going to do once you get better. As soon as it calms down, you're probably going to go back to running. I certainly would. Um, but you have to talk to your doctor and make sure that you know, you're not going to get a treatment that could potentially make you worse later. So that's, that's the other thing. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.